and John Carmichael, and we are so glad that you have tuned in today. We're expecting some powerful things to take place today, and I want to encourage you from the very beginning of the program to do a couple of things. First of all, I want you to get your Bible and pen and piece of paper, because we're going to be looking at some very powerful things of how our words... Be, dominate our situation and I want you to 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 get some uh, information on this because I want you to understand why we will lead you to begin to speak certain things the other thing I want to encourage you to do is to call that number on your screen because I know that we've got many of our friends that are watching today that you need a miracle in your life maybe you need a miracle in your family in your bodies and God wants to do that. Someone says, well, you know, you all talk about all those things, about miracles, and we see the prayer partners. Does God ever really do anything? Well, absolutely He does. You know, we uh, took a, a call last week from a lady, a praise report of a lady who called in on this program that I'm encouraging you to call in. She did what I'm encouraging you to do. She had cancer in her spine, in her spinal cord, right around her neck area. And she called in for prayer. We ministered to her here at Word of Life, began to pray for her. When they went back in to her to do surgery, she was completely healed. Cancer was gone out of her body. Now, as a person just like you, called this program, called that famous number, 502-962-9650, she called that number, cancer in the spine, healed. Had another lady. She was a pastor. Talked to me this week. She called here. I remember actually talking to her on the phone. She had, was in the hospital when she called. She called with a disease that is incurable. Say that with me. Incurable disease. Call the number on the screen, that your number that you see right there on your TV. We ministered to her live here with this phone in very front of me. I'm, why, you say, why are you saying it like that? Because I want you to see that these are real things, real people, just like you that have called. Incurable disease. We began to pray for her, began to speak the word of God over her. She told me three days later, the doctor came in. That famous head shake, we don't know what happened, but you no longer have that disease. It's completely out of your body. After she had had tests that say that she had it, and now they were going to treat, they were treating her for it. They had to stop treatment of the disease because the disease was gone. Those are just a few of the testimonies of people who have called in here on this program and God has touched them. God has provided for them. A lady at, at Evangel North called in at one day. And she told me just recently that she called in for a financial need. Within 24 hours of calling in on this program, God had completely met the need. So what I'm encouraging you to do, I say this because I want you to call that number. I want you to grab that phone right now. And say, you know what? I believe in the power of prayer. I believe that God wants to do something. And we're going to pray something today that we call the prayer of faith. You'll hear it say it this way. We're not just going to pray for you. We're going to pray a specific prayer for you. It's called the prayer of faith. And what the prayer of faith simply says is this. Is that we believe that God's word is true and that when we pray in the name of Jesus, according to the word of God, that it's going to be answered. So that's why we're encouraging you to call right now. We, we've, uh, we've got just one phone open left. People are calling in already. I want you to call in. Call in throughout the whole program today because God is going to release miracles. And in fact, I would like the opportunity, if you would do this, to let me pray for you. I count it an honor and a privilege to pray for you. And if you would tell that prayer partner that you want to be transferred over to the here, and they will transfer you here, and we will pray for you, we will believe God with you, and friends, we have testimonies where God is doing it. Not John Carmichael, not Pastor Ray, but God is doing it. He's the miracle worker. I say it like this, I am not the healer, 
but I know the healer. And it's Jesus Christ. And God wants to heal you. He wants to touch your family, your finances today in the name of Jesus. When we come back, we're going to go over to the phones and do a couple of things. But when we come back, we're going to begin to look for just a few moments while you're praying and believing God for how powerful the words of your mouth are in your miracle and in your family. So we got lots of great things for the program today. I'm telling you, we are jam-packed here, and God's doing some great things. Right now, we're going to go over to the phone. Pastor Ray is standing by right there with those busy prayer partners, and they're <coughs> receiving your calls. God bless you, Pastor Ray. How are things going? Things are going wonderful, Pastor John. I'm just, I'm excited uh, to really hear what you have to release to us today, how our words can dominate our situation. I'm, I'm fully persuaded that Pastor has something great for you today. Again, get your pens, your pencils, your papers out. Call somebody and say, hey, God has a word for you today. God's going to release something into your spirit that's going to cause an explosion of faith to rise up on the inside of you. How our words can dominate our situation. My God, that just sounds powerful. Look, our prayer partners are here. The number's on your screen. Call today. Believe God that he's going to do something great because we're here to believe God with you, but it's not just us alone. The Bible says wherever two touch and agree and ask, it'll be done by the Father which is in heaven. That's you and that's us agreeing and believing that God is going to do something great for you today. We're just excited and ready. Don't give them a break. Matter of fact, my sister just got off. Somebody else call in right now because we're believing God with you. We're going to go to a song right now, and then after that, we're coming right back to Pastor John, and he has a word to release to you today that's going to dominate your situation. God bless you. We'll be right back. I dream of a city called glory and it was so bright so bright and so fair and as I entered the gates I cried Then they carried me from mansion to mansion, yes, and all the sights, oh, all the sights that I saw. Then I said that I want to see. My Jesus, for He's the one who died for all. Then I bowed all my knees and cried, Holy, Holy Lord God Almighty, you. 
God's power, God's presence is here right now to touch you. You know, I walked into the studio today, even this morning, and I just sensed there was just, just something different, just something different in the air. And I believe that that is for you right now, that God wants to do some powerful things in your life right now. And we're encouraging you to call that number on your screen. Tell those prayer partners that you want to pray the prayer of faith today and believe that God is ready to do miracles. We told you testimonies of people being healed of cancer, people uh, being healed of incurable diseases in their bodies, things that they don't have medication to get rid of. They can only treat the symptom. God wants to do that for you. But you and I have to, we have a part to play. We have a part to play in prayer. We, and, and then we have a part to play, and we're going to talk about this today for a few moments. But I want you, while you're, while you're listening, call that number. Don't just, don't just sit and listen, but call the number on your screen. Because as you step out and do your part in your miracle... And, and by receiving prayer and saying, you know what, I'm going to believe that God's touching me today. Friend, that is the catalyst. That's the key and the ignition 
that causes that miracle to come to place in your life. And I'd love the opportunity to pray for you. Tell that prayer part you'll be transferred over here and we would love to pray for you. Now today, I want to share with you briefly from the Word of God about how powerful your words are in relationship to your miracle. In relationship really to anything that's going on in your life. And we've been teaching on this a little bit at Evangel North Church over the past few services. And, and uh, I'm just going to just share with you briefly some high points maybe of why we believe that there's power in the words of our mouth. And some people hear about this. I've heard it called, uh, the you guys are name it and claim it or blab it and grab it type things where we teach about the words of your mouth being able to create things your words of your mouth being able to turn things around in your life and in your situation well do we get this doctrine from just a few obscure scriptures in the bible or could it be that this principle starts out and permeates the whole Bible. Well, I'm going to tell you today that it absolutely permeates the entire Bible. And we can look back all the way from Genesis chapter 1 and verse 3 when God said, let there be light and there was light, that when God created something, He spoke it, to God speaking over man and Adam and Eve, the blessing of God, to talking about Jesus, talking about Ezekiel, using the Word of God and causing things that were uh, dry bones to become alive again. We're going to look here at a scripture in the book of Isaiah chapter 65. We're going to see that Isaiah says, uh, going to talk about blessing a person. Jesus talked about speaking to a mountain and you will have what you say. And I could go on and on, not going to be able to exhaust the subject in the few moments that we have on this program today. But I want you to just catch this point. Your words dominate your situation. In fact, you are where you are today as a result of what you've been saying. I'm not talking about what you've been saying and things that you don't believe. I'm talking about the things that you say that you do believe. And a lot of times people get a little bit of light on this doctrine. They hear a little bit about it. So they'll, they'll try it. They'll, someone will say, well, I tried, I, I tried to speak some things. I tried to get control of the words of my mouth and it didn't work. Well, isn't that interesting? You said it didn't work and it doesn't work. You're living proof that this does work. It works just like it says. But really, the issue is not about you just arbitrarily saying things. What is it at issue is those things that you really believe when you release them out of your mouth, positive or negative. You believe negative things are going to happen. You say negative things are going to happen. And it's coupled with faith that it's going to, ha it's going to happen. You believe that promises of God, you've got faith for miracles. And so you speak that, then all of a sudden you'll be surprised it begins to happen. In fact, I went through the Bible and I have not found one miracle. I want to say that again. I have not found one miracle that did not have at least at either the first thing or right at the beginning of the miracle, the words were spoken. The woman with the issue of blood, you know what the first thing she did? The first thing she did, ask yourself, read the story. What was the first thing she did? Someone says, well, she heard of Jesus. No, I want something she did. That was something someone else did. They told her about Jesus. The first thing she did after she believed that God was going to heal her is that it says, for she said. She kept telling herself, if I can touch him, I'll be made whole. If I can, Amplified Bible says it like this. For she kept saying to herself, if I can touch him, I will be made whole. The story and that many of you are familiar with, you've know, some of you have known this story, you think your whole life, David and Goliath. David and Goliath, the story of David and Goliath starts out, you know how that miracle starts out? With David saying, 
Who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he would defy the armies of God? It starts out by him standing in front of the giant saying, I am going to take your head off your shoulders. His words ended up preceding the miracle. The, the prodigal son sitting in the pigsty, the first thing he did was he said, I'm going to go back to my father's house and there my father will receive me. Words of his mouth. Jesus, and we'll look at this. Go ahead and turn. We, we was going to start out in, in, in um, Isaiah, but let's look at uh, uh, Mark chapter 11 because we want to pray for you and believe God. I've got a couple of calls here. Please don't hang up. We want to pray for you. Your, your calls are extremely important to us. So just wait just a moment. But the Bible says in the book of Mark chapter 11, verse 22 through 24 tells us a story of what happened when Jesus walked by a fig tree the day before, cursed the fig tree, said no one will eat fruit of you ever again. If you would have taken a snapshot and picture at that time, that tree did not blow up. It wasn't like he said it and then kadoosh, skadoosh, it blew up. No, that's not what happened. A process began when Jesus cursed that fig tree and sometime between then and the next day, it didn't just spectacularly happen, it just happened. Sometime that fig tree died. The disciples looked at Jesus and said, that fig tree you cursed is dead. It withered away. Now I'm gonna tell you what religious people would tell you from this moment forward. Religious people would tell you that Jesus looked at them and said, now boys, I'm Jesus, you're not. Don't you think you can go curse trees and it's going to listen to you? Because after all, trees don't have ears. How can they listen to you? And I am the Son of God, you're not. That's what religious people would tell you it said. Some people might even say, well, Jesus was just talking to the disciples. He said, now listen, I can do it and you can do it, but nobody else is going to be able to do it. That's just for us till the church gets established. No, that's not what he said either. You know what he said? He said, have faith in God for whosoever, 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 you are a whosoever, shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe those things that he says will come to pass. Look at this next phrase, Mark eleven twenty three. 23. He will have whatever he says. He will have whatever he says. He will have whatever he says. Friends, I'm going to tell you right now, you can have what you say. You can have what you say. Some people say, well, I'm just saying what I have. I'm just calling it like I see it. I call a spade a spade. I, I, I just call it like I see it. No, you don't understand what you're doing. You are speaking today and what you're speaking today is going to end up being your tomorrow. You see, most people say what they have when Jesus said you can have what you say. I want you to stop right there. Please listen to what I'm telling you. Most people are saying what they have. I'm sick. I'm tired. I'm broke. I'm disgusted. I'm this. My marriage is a wreck. We're not one. Blah, blah, blah. All this stuff. They're saying what they have. They're calling it like they see it. But Jesus didn't say, say what you have. He said you can have what you say. Or you can determine what you're going to have in your hand. You can determine what is your possession. You can determine what's your reality by what you say. When Jesus cursed that fig tree, it did not die immediately, but the process began and by the next day it was over. It was over. Abraham called himself for 25 years. Abraham called himself the father of many nations before he ever had one baby. He had to call himself for 25 years. I'm Abraham. I'm Abraham. I'm Abraham. I'm the father of many nations. I'm the father of many nations. I'm the father of many nations. You got to know that. I'm going to get to some calls right now. But I want you to understand the purpose of the words of your mouth. And when I pray for you today, after we pray, you're going to begin to say, I am healed. I am blessed. My needs are met. I am strong. What are you doing? Are you lying? No. You're calling those things that be not as though they are. You're going to have what you say in Jesus' name. 
We're going to take our first caller, and I want to say to the callers, please make sure you listen to the phone and not to your television. In fact, you might want to turn your TV down so that we can interact and it can be a clear and smooth interaction. So I'm going to give you just a moment. We're going to take our first caller right now. Hello, welcome to Word Alive. Can we have your first name? Welcome to Word Alive. Can we have your first name, please? Is that me? Yeah, that's you. <laughs> okay. Uh, my name's Jim. Hey, Jim. What city are you calling from today? I'm down here in Brandenburg. Down in Brandenburg. Well, Brandenburg. well I'm not in town, but I'm in Meade County. All right. Well, Jim, how can we pray for you today? Well, uh, I'll be honest with you. I've, I've called in before. All and, right. Uh, and I'm, I am a Christian. I've been a Christian for about 36 years. And I have been healed before, but I've got a problem. It did, they just don't seem to, it's like the Lord's touching me this time. Um, I've got to have healing in my legs and my shoulders. Your legs and your shoulders. Yeah, I've got really, really bad, and I hate to say this, arthritis. I always said I'd never get it, but some, <laughs> somehow it settled upon me some way. All right. Used to, I used to work real hard, done a lot of lifting and everything, and I am a big man. All right. Well, I tell uh, you what we're going to do. Go ahead. No, go ahead. Well, no, I, you got more. To, you got other things we can pray for you. Well, a lot of people just blame it on my weight, but like I said, I weigh. I worked and worked and worked and mm -hmm. and uh, worked at American Standard there in Louisville. Okay. And um, never had a bit of problem with my legs. And uh, we bought a little place down here in the county, and I was out tilling one day, and I fell in a hole mm. and tore up my legs. And then after that, everything just you know went fell apart. Okay. Well, Jim, I'm sorry that about that accident for sure, and uh, we're going to pray for you. Well, you know, VA, I'm, I'm a veteran, and they blame it on my weight. Oh, <laughs> I see. They said the hole didn't do anything about it, but... Well, I tell uh, VA, you... We know how VA is sometimes, so... I tell you, God uh, took some weight off of me. In fact, I was talking to some people about it today. Back in 2003, the Lord took off about 70 pounds off of me, and, uh, and it was by... Just releasing my faith and listening to the Lord. In fact, I would. Well, I tell you, I, I spent uh, seven months in the hospital mm -hmm. uh, from uh, September 2011 till uh, March of 2012, and um, I lost. Uh, of course, I was almost dying. The Lord brought me through three different times. They said I almost died, but mm -hmm. I lost 80 pounds. But um, I tell you what, I've always been a big man. I was uh, 195 pa eight, uh, eighth grader. Mm-hmm. And uh, 210, when I got out of high school, I've always been big. My, uh, I, I think a lot of mine is genetics. Is that right? My mother was uh, a big woman. She weighed 235. Well, I understand that. I, a lot of my family... I know, I, I know no, no doubt I can lose some weight, but I mean, sure. I'm, I'm still going to be a big man, no doubt. Sure, absolutely. And a lot of my family were uh, uh, have issues with weight as well. Uh -huh. And uh, the Lord spoke to me. I was praying for healing over myself, and the Lord told me I was abusing my body, and that no matter how much faith I had to get healed, that if I kept abusing my body, that it wouldn't work because I was violating my temple. Yeah. So I told the Lord, I said, well, God, you got to help me. And he said, I absolutely will. So I began to speak over my body, Romans chapter 8, verse 13, that says, by the Spirit, we put to death the deeds of the flesh. Mm -hmm. And so every day I'd get up, Jim, and I would begin to speak. I'd say, today I will not overeat. I declare today that my, my flesh is in line with the Word of God. And the mm -hmm. Spirit of God would speak to me. He'd say, now stop eating. I'd have a plate full of food, and I'd eat a little bit, and he'd say, now stop. And I, I mean, I'd hear it in my spirit. And when I obeyed that, all of a sudden, it didn't happen overnight. It took me about a year, right at a year, and the 70 pounds came off my body. Well, wow. and then the Lord helped me with that. Just doing what I'm telling you, just speaking and listening, listening to the Lord. And then I'll just tell you this because we're going to pray for you. But I just want to tell you, we're talking about the words of our mouth for a moment. I was diagnosed with three issues in my back. Went to the doctor. I was, had been in severe pain for several months. This was back uh, probably about uh, three years ago or so, three or four years ago, and was in severe pain. In fact, I was having to take... 10 or more ibuprofen, high strength ibuprofen, just to make it through the day because the pain was so severe. 
So mm. finally, my wife looked at me and she said, you are going to have to go to the doctor because I wouldn't go. And so I went to the doctor and they took x-rays of my back. They said, well, you've got three issues. One of them we can fix, but two of them, you are not going to get fixed of it. You're going to be in pain the rest of your life. We could try to do surgery, but it just is what it is. And uh, one of them it was actually a genetic thing and it's just going to be, be that. So I looked at one out of three. They I had three issues. They could fix one of them. Well, that's a 33% success rate. To me, that's a failure. So I said, doctor, you failed. You failed the test. So I, didn't, I decided that I was going to do other things. So I began to speak over my back. And I found scriptures, Brother Jim, and I found scriptures on my back. I found scriptures about bones. I found every verse I could find about that. And I began to declare over myself, Brother Jim, the word of the Lord. I began to speak the word of God. I wouldn't talk about how much pain I was in. I wouldn't talk about how bad I hurt. I wouldn't even talk about my diagnosis. No, I saw it on the x-ray. I mean, here my wife and I are sitting in the room and the doctor's showing us on the x-ray. You got this, here it is, here it is, here it is. You're going to be in pain, blah, blah, blah. So I just spoke over my back. It didn't happen immediately, Brother Jim. I, in fact, I cannot tell you when I received it. I don't know when I received it. I mean, I know it took place at Calvary, but I mean, when did it manifest in my body? I can't tell you, except one day my wife looked at me about three or four months later and said, do you realize that you have not taken any ibuprofen in the last couple of days? And I re all of a sudden thought, you're right. And I'm not in any pain either. And went back and the Lord had completely healed my back, restored bones, changed genetic issues, healed at one of the things was scoliosis, completely healed it by me doing nothing more than speaking over my back. Had a shoulder issue, tore, uh, tore uh, uh, the thing in there, I forget now exactly what it's called, rotator cuff, and began to speak over the rotator cuff, began to declare. They said, you're going to have to have surgery for it, was in pain, couldn't lift my arm up, couldn't do nothing. You're going to have to have surgery to fix it the way that it's torn there. And all of a sudden, all I would did, it didn't happen in one shot. It wasn't like I just spoke it or someone prayed for me. I, w I wish those suddenly miracles, they happen for some people. And I've had God do that, but that's not how. It's just every day, all day long, I'm speaking the word, speaking the word over it, speaking the word over it, thanking God I'm healed, calling it whole, calling it well, exercising it in Jesus' name. And all of a sudden, Brother Jim, God healed it. Now I'm giving you firsthand testimony of how mm -hmm. this happened. So what we're going to do today, Brother Jim, is I'm going to pray for you and we're going to speak over you. And now I want you to begin to find the Bible, find verses of scripture, because the same God that brought you through those miracles and that healed your body before and kept you alive to this point, I'm going to tell you, he can help you with the weight issue. But I'm also going to tell you, He can heal your body. He can touch your legs and restore cartilage. And I know to some people, this absolutely seems like it's ridiculous as it can be. But I'm telling you, this stuff works if we'll work it. And God wants to heal you. So that's why you call, because I know you're a person of faith. Brother Jim, even though I'm talking to you, I'm really talking to some other people. Because right. right now, Brother Jim, there are thousands of people that are listening right now that are in your situation, and they need to know, how do I get healed? How can I get it to work for me? And this is how you do it. You begin to release your faith and begin to speak the Word of God, and God does it. Father, today I pray for my brother Jim. And Lord, while I'm praying for Jim, I'm really praying for thousands of people that are watching right now that have issues in their legs, in their bones, in their back, issues in their weight, God. And Father, today I release the word of the Lord of healing, restoration. Lord, I thank you that cartilage is being restored. Nerves are being healed right now. Muscles and tendons and bones right now are being restored in Jesus' name, God. God, I thank you that genetic issues are being reversed, God, right now. Lord, I come against trauma that's happened in Jim's body 
between the accidents and, and any issues he had with, with being in the, uh, in, as a veteran, God. And Father, today, I just declare, Lord, Lord, that there's healing. Father, you said that our youth is renewed like the eagles. And I speak renewing to his body, renewing to his bones, renewing to him right now. Be healed. Be whole in the name of of Jesus. Hallelujah. Now, Brother Jim, regardless yes, of whether you're in any pain, right? What, what's that? I said, yes, I'm listening. Go ahead. Regardless of how you feel. And a lot of times I'll ask people, are you in any pain right now? You know, try to see if there's a difference. And, and that's good to do in one sense. But in sometimes that does people a disservice because they go, they say, well, I don't feel any different right now. So I guess it didn't work. No, here's what you got to do. You got to keep saying out of your mouth, you know what? I'm the healed of the Lord. I'm the healed of the Lord. I find every verse from the Bible and declare, I would speak that over my body. I would declare, I'm going to run and not grow weary. I'm going to walk and not faint. And begin to speak that every day. I will. Sometimes four, five, six, seven, eight, ten times a day for days. Be committed to it. Be committed not to say anything else but that. And when you begin to release that word out of your mouth and begin to just say, you know what? I'm healed. I'm healed. God's healed me today. And you begin to couple that with faith. Now, Brother Jim, sometimes you'll say things that you want to believe, but you don't believe them yet. And that's okay because you can talk yourself into faith. But right. you got to realize that this stuff doesn't work until we believe it because Jesus said it's what you say with no doubt in your heart so it's you but you can sometimes talk yourself into faith you can begin to say you know what I don't believe this right now but I want to believe it I want to believe it and so you begin to speak over it and and all of a sudden you'll begin to say it so much you start to believe it's true and when you cross that line that's when it'll work for you in Jesus name Jim Thank you for calling. Thank you for spending so much time with me because I'm going to tell you what we did, Brother Jim. We, you and I, have been able to minister to some people who've been watching today because I want people to see how this works because they, they need to know. So, Jim, right, thank you. I appreciate you. that. Thank you for calling uh, and keep calling. All right, my Brother friend. John? Yes, sir. I did want to say this before I get off the air. Is it yes. okay? Yes, sir. Okay, a lot of people are having trouble uh, uh, with smoking. All right. And they're really running a rule on smoking these days. They say it causes all kinds of problems. When I first got saved, I was smoking four packs a day, and I asked the Lord to take these cigarettes away from me. Mm -hmm. And he took the desire for me to smoke away from me, and I haven't smoked a cigarette since. Well, praise the Lord. And you know what? Well, I'm saying these people that say they can't quit, just turn over to Jesus. Amen. That's a good word. That's a good word, Brother Jim. Thank you very much for calling. And you know what? We, we want to pray for you. I've got a couple of callers here we want to get to today. And we want to believe God for miracles. But keep calling that number on your screen. We've got many people who, who just need miracles. And one of the things that when we're praying for these, I know that some of you say, well, I've got that same problem. Release your faith because we're praying for you in the name of the Lord. Hello. Welcome to Word Alive. Can we have your first name? Johnetta. Johnetta, how can we pray for yeah. you today? Um, I have, um, I like a prayer to, uh, well, I'd like to agree in prayer with you. Yes. That today is the day that I am healed. All right. I have like a Parkinson's okay. disorder. Mm hmm And it causes shaking in my hands and yep. arms and sometimes in my head. All right. And I would just like, I, I believe for healing and I believe All that right. I've been healed. Amen. But it's just... I need some I need some help and agreement. Amen. Well we absolutely will. We're gonna pray and agree. Someone says, Now wait a minute, John Etta. Someone will say, John Etta, that's incurable. Yeah. They'll say, John Etta, it's only gonna get worse. That's what they're gonna tell you. The doctors will tell you that. They love you. Bless yeah. those doctors. We appreciate doctors so much. We really do. And but that's yeah. what they're gonna tell you. You're gonna have family and friends. There's gonna be people watching saying there's no hope that's for John Etta. Doesn't matter what y'all do, she's gonna get no listen to me. John Etta, once you hear me. 
God, yes. Jesus Christ died for your healing, and that includes Parkinson's. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to begin to, first of all, command Parkinson's to leave your body right now. And then we're going to just declare, I'm going to declare that you are free of Parkinson's disease, that you are healed. The Bible says, call those things that be not as though they are. What, what's mm -hmm. not is you being free of Parkinson's. But we're going to call you free of Parkinson's disease. Because yeah. that's what the Bible says. And we're going to declare, I am the healed of the Lord. Father, I curse Parkinson's disease off my sister. I bind that in the name of Jesus. That's a work of the devil against my sister. Satan, get your hands off of her body right now. Parkinson's, I command you to leave this body in the name of Jesus. And I speak to your body, be free of Parkinson's disease be healed. I speak peace. I speak stillness to your limbs, stillness to your hands, stillness to your body in every way that you have total control of your temple in the name of the Lord Jesus, yeah. that you are free. You are free. I declare you are free of Parkinson's disease. And I believe in my heart that we have what we say. She is healed. She is steady. She is steady. She is healed right now in the name of Jesus. Now, now, Johnetta, I want you to keep that in your mouth. I am healed. I am whole. I am free. You're going to just say it right now. You're free of this in the name of Jesus. In the name of the Lord, you're free for the glory of God. And that woman with the issue of blood, the Bible says, for she kept saying, if I can touch him, I will be made whole. And you're going to keep saying, I am made whole. I have touched him. I am whole today. I am a free woman, free of Parkinson's today in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. God's touching your body. God's healing your body. Parkinson's is leaving right now. And you know what? It might happen suddenly. It might happen over time. But it really doesn't matter. Because all that matters is, right now, the process has begun. The process. Are you still there? Are you still there, Johnetta? Yes, I am. You are. Okay. I'm here getting some static. Well, God bless you. And we thank you for calling Word Alive. Hello, welcome to Word Alive. Can we have your first name? Marge. Marge, what city are you calling from? Uh, I'm Long Island, New York, West Islip. Long Island, New York. Well, wonderful. How can we pray for you today, Marge? I would like prayer for uh, my grandson, who's his, in his fifth week of uh, boot camp. Okay. Well, we would definitely just will like, pray. He, a month before he left, I, I had been praying for the Lord to... Uh, you know, give him a born again experience before he leaves, and God okay. gave me that uh, awesome. blessing. And so, I'd like prayer for the Lord to, to use this time to uh, bring him closer to the Lord, to Amen. teach him how to uh, keep seeking the Lord on all things and hear from God Himself. I, that's sure. Well, we can that pray this will for be that. a time for him to grow with I, I, uh, his uh, intimacy with God. The verse we're going to begin to pray, Marge, over over your son is we're going to pray out of the book of Ephesians, chapter 1. Ephesians, chapter 1. Chapter 1, okay. Where, where Apostle Paul would pray for the church and believers, he prayed, may the spirit of wisdom and understanding be theirs. May their eyes be enlightened to the truth. They were already believers, but they needed more revelation. They needed wisdom. And so we're going to pray that over him right now. Father, today we just declare that that he shall be filled with a spirit of wisdom and revelation out of Ephesians chapter 1, that the eyes of his understanding would be enlightened, that he would know what belongs to him in Jesus, God, that he would grow in faith, grow in the grace of God, 
Father, this is a biblical prayer. Paul prayed it for the church. We're praying it for him right now. And we're expecting, God, that his eyes are going to be open today. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. God bless you. Thank you for calling all the way there from, Thank you, brother. from New York. God bless you. Thank you for calling today. And we want to pray for you. We've got just a little bit of time left in the program. We've got some calls we're going to get to today. Hello. Welcome to Word Alive. Can we have your first name? Deanna. Deanna, uh, how can we pray for you today? Um, I receive a monthly check, and I have two bills that I don't have the money to pay for until okay. the next check of the 24th. And uh, I was just praying for, you know, uh, some kind of miracle. All right. Well, that's good because we serve a miracle working God. Philippians chapter 419. I'm sure you're familiar with it. If you're not, that's okay. Philippians 419. And my God shall supply all of your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. And so we're just going to begin to pray for you, Deanna for a miracle that God's going to provide for this need. You know, uh, Deanna, I'm going to say this, and, and I, I know I've got some other calls. Please hold on, but I want, I want to share this with you. Uh, the other day, I was thinking about an, a, a project that I was in, and uh, I, had, uh, I was about $1,000 upside down on this project, meaning it was I didn't have what I needed. And on this deal, and, 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 and I was going to have to, to dip into to my own money and, and different things like that. And I was in this deal, and it wasn't, it just didn't look like it was going to work for me. And I was $1,000 the other side of what I wanted to be. And so I decided all weekend I wasn't going to worry about it. But I guess what happened is Monday morning, here I am, Monday morning, 4 o'clock in the morning, I wake up, and I guess my worrier, my worrier decided to start working. Well, all of a sudden, and I don't want to get into the whole issue, I began to, to hear myself. Now, I, you say, what do you mean? I, I mean, in my room, God looking at my heart, I hear myself loud. Other people hear it who are in my wife there. And myself saying, Jesus said, you can have what you say. And so um, I needed this miracle to happen. So I, my worrier's trying to work on this issue and I'm going to uh, so I said okay fine now you say how did you hear yourself I would preached that Sunday to this day my family and I cannot figure out how I thought one of my kids might have been playing on their iPod or it might have been a computer that's not what it was it was a supernatural thing God looking at my heart you say I don't believe that happened friend I'm telling you I'm not lying if I said anything else it'd be a lie that this is the God's honest truth my voice was booming in my room a Monday morning at 4 a.m. It was what I had just preached. Don't say what you have. You can have what you say. Now, that's a supernatural experience that really happened to me just this past Monday. So I decided, I said, okay, I'm not going to worry about this. And I declare, and I began to just speak. God's going to work this out. I declare I'm going to have what I need in Jesus' name. Now, by noon of Monday... It went from being a thousand dollars deficit to a three hundred dollar to the plus by noon of that day. God had worked it out that way. Now, three hundred dollars may not sound like a whole lot of money to you, but when you are a thousand dollars behind and now you're three hundred dollars ahead on a deal, that's a pretty good swing, if you if you know what I mean. Yeah. And so. We're going to begin to just declare the word of the Lord. Father, we speak, God, over Deanna today, that my God shall supply all of her need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Father, we just declare right now that this need is met. It's met now. God, it's being supplied for today in the name of Jesus. We're not going to worry about it. We cast it on the Lord. And God, we're going to let you take care of the details. Whatever way you want to do it, whatever strategy, God, that you want to give to Deanna to speak to her what her part is, you have a plan, Father, and God, I ask you to reveal that plan. Reveal that plan to Deanna. She's not going to worry. God, it's going to turn around. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, Deanna, don't let anything else come out of your mouth, but just that right now. 
We thank you for calling Indiana. We appreciate your call. We're going to go over to the phones right now. We got a couple of calls on hold. Please do not hang up. If we don't get to you on air, we will get to you off air because we want to pray for you. It's very important that we pray for you and believe God with you. You, We love you and it means a lot. Right now we're going over the phones with Pastor Ray who's standing with our prayer partners that have been online believing God for people in Jesus' name. Pastor Ray. Praise God, Pastor John. Just real, real encouraging word and, and just receiving everything that you're saying. Those of y'all that are watching out there, you need to begin to just take what Pastor John is saying. You know, the Bible says faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. The more that you hear these type of messages, the greater your faith begins to rise up on the inside of you to be able to take hold of that thing of what you've been believing God for. Now, you just stop believing and you keep speaking. Believe and speak. Believe and speak. Declare, proclaim. And I'm telling you, like Pastor John was saying, those things will manifest in your life. We have a pile, a stack of prayer requests. People are calling in. They needing uh, uh, houses. They need to be healed. They need jobs. They need finances. They need salvation. Just hundreds and hundreds of, of different needs that are going on out there right now. And I'm telling you, if you were to take what Pastor John was saying, and stop speaking the negative on what you don't have and begin to speak what God has promised and what you can have, you will see your situation turn around and, and, and believe in God. So here, we're going to um, uh, we want you to continue to close. I mean, excuse me. We want you to continue to call in. Our prayer partners are standing here with you and believing God with you. And we really want to believe God for great things in your life today. We're going to go to a song right now, and we'll be right back with you. God bless you. Yeah. There is an endless song echoes in my soul. I hear the music play And though the trials may come Still I'm holding on And to the rock I'll cling How can I keep from singing your praise? How can I ever say no? How amazing is your love How can I keep from shouting your name I know I am loved by the King And it makes my heart want to sing I will lift my eyes Are you ready to lift up your eyes? Here we go I will lift my eyes in the darkest night For I know my Savior lives And I will walk with you Knowing you'll see me true And I'll sing the songs sing when I win. I can sing when I lose my step and I fall down again. I can sing because you pick me up. I can sing because you're there. I can sing because I know you hear me, Lord, when I call you in prayer. I can sing with my last breath. Yeah. 
the Lord praise. Come on. Hallelujah. You know, we're looking forward once again to coming here to Billtown Road, to the Billtown Road uh, Evangel World Prayer Center with our dear friend Bob Rogers for our yearly conference. Now, this is the only time I'm going to be in this particular area all year, and I'm asking you to bring your family and friends and join me. As you know, there's no registration fee to attend. We're going to be there beginning uh, June the 20th, which will be Thursday night, all the way through Sunday night, June the 23rd. And we're going to be there expecting to hear from God. Now, God has given me two major, and brother, when I say major, I'm talking about major prophetic updates. I'm not sure what night I'm going to preach those. So um, a lot of times people will call and say, when's Perry going to preach it? I don't even know till I get there, to be honest with you. But what I want to tell you is God has given me some really powerful, practical insight that's going to help you spiritually in these last days. So come and bring the entire family for all of those services. Don't miss one. And that'll be June the uh, 20th through the 23rd, Billtown Road, Evangel World Prayer Center. I will see you there. Word Alive is a production of Bob Rogers Ministries in Louisville, Kentucky. For more information on the outreach of this ministry or to become a partner, visit bobrogersministries.org. And remember to like us on Facebook and Ustream. Just search TV Word Alive.